Now if you've been watching this channel for a while, you're probably familiar with HTMX. In this video I want to look at a package that's similar to HTMX and that's Unpoly. Now Unpoly comes with a similar idea to HTMX and that's the idea of doing server-side rendering and returning fragments or partials to the front end and giving that front end or the client the feel of a single page application and making it nice and interactive. So in this video I want to build a small interactive application using Unpoly alongside Django as the backend framework although the concepts are going to work with any backend. So let's get started. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page, which we've got in the description and give the video a thumbs up and subscribe for more of this content. So on Poly here, as it says, progressive enhancement for HTML. We get powerful new HTML attributes to build dynamic user interfaces on the server. So basically you add attributes to your HTML elements, very similarly to the way you do that with HTMX. Now the idea of fragments is key to Unpoly. So Unpoly will enhance the links that you have on the page, the anchor tags, and it's going to update fragments instead of full page reloads. And this is the benefit of preserving other page state, for example, scroll positions or form fields. You can also submit forms without leaving the page. And again, you can add some attributes to your HTML elements in order to enable that functionality. And you can also branch off into layers, for example, overlays such as modals. So there's support for that in Unpoly as well. Now let's quickly show an example just to get started. If we scroll to the top here, there's a button that says get started. We're going to click that and be taken to this page. And I'll leave a link to this page just below the video. Now Unpoly is an unobtrusive JavaScript framework for applications that render on the server. And it allows your views to do things that are not normally possible in HTML, such as having links update only a fragment of a page and also opening links in modal dialogues. So it gives your server-side application fast and flexible front ends that feel like a single page application. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we can see one of the examples. So what we have on the back end is a couple of anchor tags, and each of these has an href that links to another file. And notice this attribute here, it's called up target. And that's set to a class name of one, and you can see that this anchor here has that class, and similarly below with a class name of two. Now up target is similar to HX target if you've used HTMX. It specifies a selector that's going to be updated with some other content, for example, content coming back from the server. Now we're going to look at that attribute soon in this video. And if we scroll down, you can see other examples, for example, using up layer. And you can also do transitions and animations. So Unpoly comes with an up transition attribute as well. And if you look at this example here, when we click this link here, you can see that the fragment is updated and there's a transition going from left to right and then back from right to left, I think, when you click it again. So let's now build a simple example using Django. And this is not going to be anything too complicated, but it is going to be an introduction to Unpoly. So in a Django application, I have a base template here and we have a content block that we're going to work with in this video. And we have Tailwind being brought in from a CDN. Now what I'm going to do is run the server at the bottom and we're going to visit the index.html page. And we're going to see some news article data on that page. So let's go to the browser and here we have the page with three news articles that are coming from the Django server and we have a read more link here that when we click nothing happens. Now if we go to our application what I'm going to do is go to the Django views.py file and we've hard coded some news articles here. Each one has an ID, a title and a description. When we click read more we want to see this description and that's what we're going to build with Unpoly in this video and if we go down to the view it's very simple it just adds those news articles to the context and then it returns index.html. So the idea is that when we click read more, we want text to appear on the right hand side. And that's going to happen without a page reload by loading up a fragment using Unpoly. We're also going to learn how to change the text from read more to read less when that particular link is clicked. So let's get started with that. I'm going to go back to the Unpoly documentation. Of course, the first thing we need to do here is install Unpoly. Now you can see that Unpoly consists of a single JavaScript and CSS file. So what we can do to get started and get those two files is go to this link to a CDN page. And this is going to be good enough for this video and for development. What I'm going to do is just copy the script and the link tag and let's go back to VS Code and go to base.html and we can paste those into the head tag. Once we've done that, we can go back to index.html and we're going to look at this a little bit just now. Now what we have is a Django template for loop here and for each article in the news articles that are part of the context, we have a div here and we're rendering out the article title and the date that the article was created. And here is the key anchor tag here that says read more. And currently the href for that is empty. Now we want the response to go to this div here. So I'm going to separate this div and it has an ID of article text. 
Now, if we look at the Tailwind CSS structure here, we have a grid and there's two columns in the grid and the news articles appear on one out of those two columns and the second column, that's where we want to actually place the article text when we click the read more button. And actually it's not a button, it's just an anchor tag. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the up target, the target for the server response to this article text ID. So let's add that property to the anchor tag. And in fact, I'm gonna do this on a new line. So just underneath the class names, we'll add up target and we're gonna set that to article text. So when we click read more for the given news article, we're going to get back a fragment of HTML from the server. So that's a hypermedia response. And we want to swap it into this target here, specified using up target. And we need to define a URL for Unpoly to send that Ajax request in the background. So let's just write a URL just now using Django's URL template tag. And we'll define that on the back end after we've defined the structure of it here in this href. Now we're going to call this get article. And that's because we're going to use this URL to get more details about the article. And of course, to find out what article we're actually looking for, we're going to specify an article ID. So this URL is going to have a path parameter with the ID of the article we want to look up. And it's got a name of get article. So let's save index.html. And now we're going to go to the Django URLs.py file. I'm going to duplicate this path and let's define a second path now. So it's going to be slash article. And then we'll have the path parameter for the ID of this particular article. Now we gave that a name of get article using the URL template tag. And finally, we need to link that to a Django view function. So we're going to use a view called get article and we're going to write that now. So let's go to views.py and what we can do just underneath the index view is create a new view here called get underscore article and that's going to take the Django request and it's also going to take that primary key for the article that we're looking up. The reason for that is because these path parameters are passed into Django view functions so we can get access to that here and perform any kind of processing using that path parameter. Now, if this was a database, we'd use the primary key to look up the row in the database and return that object. What I'm gonna do is just paste a line of code in here. So we're looking up the news articles, that's the hard-coded list of dictionaries. And we're using the next function in Python to find an article that has an ID equal to the ID that's passed in. And this should actually be PK, not ID, because that's the name of the parameter. So this is gonna find and return an article with that ID. And if it doesn't find one, then it's just going to return none. Once we've found the article, we can return our render here, and we're gonna render a particular fragment of HTML. And that's gonna be article.html. So we're gonna define that Django template in a second for the fragment that we want to return. And what we want to attach to the context of that is a description to be placed into the HTML. So we're gonna use this article that we have here, and that has a key in that dictionary called description. If we scroll up here and look at each dictionary, you can see that the description is what we want to return so that when we click read more, as you can see here, we want to have that description appearing on the right hand side. So that's what we're gonna return from this view here. Now we need to define article.html. So I'm gonna to go to templates here and let's create a new HTML file called article.html. And I'm gonna paste some code in here. So it's gonna be a very simple template fragment and you can see the description that we're adding to the context is rendered inside this paragraph tag. And very importantly, we are returning the div that has the ID of article text. That has to match the up target that we're defining. So you can see the target is the ID of article text. And if we go down here, we have this div and notice the class and the ID. We're preserving this ID in the fragment in this root element div that we're returning. So is this going to work? Let's now save all of these files and go back to the browser. I'm gonna refresh this page. And when we click read more, notice that the description appears on the right hand side. And if we click the second link, that's replaced by the correct description for the second news article and same for the third one. So now that this is working nicely, let's have a look at some of the transitions or animations that can be done using Unpoly. So let's go back to the Unpoly tutorial and let's look at this animation section. So whenever you update a page fragment, you can animate that change. Unpoly comes with a number of predefined transitions such as crossfade and sweeping motions. And you can also define your own with a couple of lines of JavaScript. And for the built-in transitions, all we need to do is give the fragment link an up transition attribute. And that's gonna animate between the old and the new fragment. Here you can see an up transition set to move left. And that means when we click this, you can see it moves left off the page and is replaced by the second fragment. Let's go back to VS Code and go back to index.html. And let's look at this anchor tag that we have here. 
This is the one that contains the up target attribute. And what we can do here is again add another attribute and that's up transition. And I'm going to set this to move right. Now if we save that, let's go back to our application. And this time when we click read more, you can see it comes in from the right hand side onto the page to the targeted element. And if we click more on the one below, you can see that happens again. Now that looks a bit weird because it's coming right across the entire page. Let's try another one of these transitions that's built in. So I'm going to remove the move right up transition value and let's replace this one with cross fade. If we save that and again go back to the application, let's refresh this and this time when we click read more, you can see that it fades into the page. And again, when we click another one, the existing one fades out and is replaced with the new article. Now we can also adjust the duration of these transitions. So let's go back here and we can add a new property here called up duration. And this is the number of milliseconds for the transition. I'm going to set that to 2000, in other words, two seconds. And let's go back to the page and refresh this. And this time it's going to take a little bit longer for one to fade out and be replaced with the other one. Now these aren't really professional transitions. You might want to do something a little bit better than what we have here. We're just demonstrating these attributes and how you can use them to build these kind of interactive applications where fragments are updating parts of a web page, but we don't have that full page reload. And that preserves the state and it gives the application a nice interactive feel. Now, before we move on, I'm going to set this to a lower value of 500 for up duration. And notice that this is sending an Ajax request. We can look at the terminal here. So the logs for the Django run server command have these get requests and they're going to the article slash ID endpoint. And because this is a hypermedia application, when it sends those Ajax requests, it's returning a fragment of HTML and that's using the Django render function. And any context you need to attach can be attached as the third parameter to render. Now, as well as get requests, we can also send post requests. And if you need to change the HTTP method, let's add another attribute here and it's the up method attribute. So for example, we can set that to post. I'm not actually going to do this in this video, but we're going to demonstrate that this will send a post request. This will fail because a post request is an unsafe method and we need the CSRF token to be part of the request. But I just want to see the post request appearing on the terminal. So let's refresh this page and this time we get a different response. If we go back to the terminal, you can see the post request here. Of course, we need the CSRF token though, so that's not going to work. But if you do need to send a post request, for example, you're submitting some kind of data, then you can use the up method attribute to do that. Now I'm going to remove this and we're going to go back to a get request. And I want to finish this video with another example here. So I'm going to go back to our application. Notice when we click read more, the text appears on the right hand side and that's fine. But we want to change this from read more to read less when it's clicked. And another potential thing you might want to do is just remove the anchor tag completely when it's clicked. But of course you want to reverse that state when another link is clicked. For example, if we click this one here, we want this to come back on the screen or if we've changed it from read more to read less, we want to change it back to read more. Now this is a bit of a contrived example, but it does demonstrate some useful attributes of Unpoly for responding to events. So let's go back to the documentation and I'm going to search for an attribute here and it's the up on loaded attribute. So let's click this here and we're going to be taken to a page in the documentation. Now the value for this attribute is going to be a JavaScript snippet that's executed when the server responds with new HTML. And that's going to be executed before the HTML is rendered. In other words, when it's loaded. There's also an up on rendered attribute that you can see below here. That'll be executed when Unpoly has updated all fragments. And these are quite similar to the HX on attribute in HTMX. So you can use this to perform some DOM scripting when you get back the response from the server. Now, how can we use this attribute in our anchor tag? Let's add the property now. So up on loaded. And we're going to set this to a JavaScript snippet here. And we're going to refer to this dot inner text. So this is going to refer to the anchor tag. And inner text will refer to read more that you can see here. We can change that to another value, for example, read less. Now, if we go back to the page and try this out, let's refresh the page. When we click read more, notice that it changes the text to read less. So that's kind of what we want. But the problem is, if we click one of the other links, you can see that nothing changes back here. So that's not the functionality we want, because if we want to then change from one to the other, you can see we need to click a link that says read less. So we want to change all of the other ones back when we click a particular link. Only that link should say read less, all others should say read more. Again, it's a bit of a contrived example, but it's going to demonstrate these features. What we can actually do here is write a little bit of JavaScript and we can target all of the other links and change them back to the right text. Let's go back to VS Code 
And for each one of these articles, we have an anchor tag. What I'm going to do is add a custom class to each anchor tag, and that's going to be article-link. So now every single anchor has this class. We can then go to the bottom of index.html, and I'm just going to define a script tag here. And let's write a JavaScript function within the script tag, and it's going to be toggle article links. So that's going to take in a link that we're going to pass in, and we're going to pass that in using that attribute that we saw. So let's copy the name of this function, and let's go back to the anchor tag. And this time for up on loaded, what we're going to do is replace this JavaScript snippet with the custom function that we have. And the link that we're passing in is just going to be set to this. In other words, we're passing in the anchor tag itself. So we can use the parameter that we're passing in to set the inner text to read less. So let's go back down to the function. And the last thing I want to do in this function is set link.inner text to read less. So we can do that just now. But for all of the other article links, we can use the document.querySelectorAll function. And we're going to look for all of the elements in the DOM that have that class that we added of article link. And then we can look over them using the for each function in JavaScript. And for each article link, what we can do is create a callback function. And all we're going to do here is just set article.inner text to read more. So this is just a small bit of dynamic JavaScript that we're adding to this particular application. We get all of the article links on the page, in other words, each one of these. And we set the text in that to read more. And then we take the link that was actually passed in as a parameter. And that's the one that was actually clicked. And we set the text in that to read less. Let's save this and go back to our page and refresh. We're going to try this out. When we click this, we can see that it changes to read less and we get the article in the right hand side. If we then click the link below here, we're expecting to see that change to read less, but the one at the top should also change back to read more. And you can see that that works when we click that link. And same at the bottom, when we click that, it changes all of the others back to read more. And this one is changed to read less. So the purpose of that slightly contrived example is to show the up on loaded attribute in unpoly. What we've looked at in this video is the up target attribute, and that's the target selector to update on a successful response from the server. And that's similar to the hx target attribute in htmx if you're familiar with that. We also looked at up transition. That's used to define an animation or transition when you're updating a given fragment. And we also looked at up duration for the duration of that animation. And finally, we saw how to perform actions when the server successfully returns a response using the up on loaded attribute. And there's also up on rendered and up on finished attributes as well. And these allow you to hook into different parts of the response processing and perform actions on the client side. Now, of course, when you have these kind of stateful interactions, when you click buttons and you want to update text, and you also want to update the text of other buttons, it can also be helpful to bring in something like Alpine.js. And there should be a video appearing on the screen now for Alpine if you want to check that out. So that's been a quick first look at Unpoly in this video. There's a lot more you can explore in this framework. We've built a very simple toy application here. When we click a link for a news article, it loads the description on the right hand side. And it does all that by sending an Ajax request in the background and specifying a target for that response content to be swapped into on the front end. That's all done using Ajax requests. And there's no page reload when we click this. And we also saw how to do basic transitions and respond to events and perform client side scripting. Unpoly has other attributes that you can also add for things like submitting forms and validating forms, and also for dealing with layers such as modals on the page. And you can even define your own JavaScript functions using the unpoly.compiler function, and that's for customized logic. If you'd like to see more about this, let me know in the comments. And if you want to support the channel and keep this content on YouTube, check out the coffee page that we've got just below the video. And thanks very much to everybody that's contributed to that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if so, and we'll see you soon in future videos.